on my way to the nasal endoscopy. I had my sleep study a couple days ago and I am still recovering from the tape and the uh, intrusion into, into my sleep schedule. I feel like I will never sleep again. I know that's not true, but that's just how it feels. The sleep study was pretty painless overall. It was just uncomfortable. They had me swallow a sensor and it was dangling down the back of my throat the entire time for overnight. And one time I actually, I, I don't even know if I dreamed it, but I like woke up and I was panicking because I thought it was alive. And it was wiggling and fighting back in my throat. It was really gross. And um, anyway, that was very annoying. Um, I'm glad that's over. I may have to have another one after all this is done. Uh, but we are getting more answers today and um, I will have nasal endoscopy. Hopefully Corey will record it and um, we'll see you in the office hopefully. Start recording. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Try to pay attention. I know it's not easy. It's not easy for me. Squirrel! Yeah. <laughs> shiny. Ooh, shiny. Shiny things. Now, I can't see without my glasses. Right. So I'm yeah, maybe... You can put your glasses I can? Yeah. I want my glasses. <laughs> ooh, 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 yes, definitely. Okay. I definitely, because I want to see. Yeah, you okay. You should be able to see everything I do. Yay. <laughs> okay, let's we'll try and get them into a better position here. <laughs> This yeah. looks fun. So it looks a little scary, but we don't go down that far. It's not going to be nearly as scary as the sleep study was, where it goes down yeah. the back of your throat. Yeah. And then you have to sleep with that. That was terrifying. That was that was nasty in fact. Like I'm not even worried about this one. Good. I mean I'll tell you if it gets too bad and yeah, I need to have more of it. Because nothing I do should hurt. And so I'm gonna start on the left side, I'm gonna kinda tilt her. Good. And then you can kind of tilt your chin in the corner of your eyes. You should be able to see, okay? Like this. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just gonna start here. <clears throat> oh, someone needs to shave. No, so everything is magnified. So, and so your septum is on the left side. Oh my God. Yeah. And wow. then your filter is on the right side. So you see how they're That's practically. That's the left side. Yeah. That's the good side. You see how you're practically touching? There? Yeah. And so. Oh my god. Mm, right yeah. Is. And so all the way in the back, there's a filter. That's our middle filter. Um, and it's supposed to be nice and open. You're supposed to see it without that septum kind of touching it. You see how the septum is squeezing it? Uh huh. So you're definitely pretty tight. Oh so, my god. <clears throat> yeah. So I would say a two plus plus out of four. Um, so almost a three. And honestly from the top here in the bottom very very tight so you see how your filter at the bottom on the right side is basically touching that septum as soon as we go in uh -huh. so very very tight oh my god yeah so that's the good side but did you see how red and inflamed you are yeah even on the bottom part and that's, the filters and that's like not at all for my diet it's right. like Clearly, this is out of my control now. Yeah, no. So this is the the side that you're more tight on. Oh my god. And so there's oh, that wow. filter. Your septum is on the right side, and there's absolutely no space. You see? Yeah. How there's that septum is like I'm not even able. There's that filter all the way in the back, but it's so so tight. Do you see that filter in the middle of the passage there? Uh huh. So that's like I'm barely seeing it. So you're pretty, you're pretty tight on this side as well. Um, and so this is supposed to be nice and open to where your septum is like a straight, like you're supposed to see, see a straight black kind of passage. Uh -huh. And as you can see, it's like a 
very S-shaped, very narrow passage there. Jeez. So, yeah, very inflamed. And so you're gonna feel this, but it shouldn't hurt, okay? You're just gonna kind of go in the back of your throat. Woo! And so that's the back of your throat. And um, breathe in through your nose. I'm just gonna kind of advance down. And these are your vocal cords. And so just kind of looking around here. And say E. e. Good. E. E. Good. Looks good. A little bit of drainage if you see that on top. Um, you see how your lining just looks a little. I just had to swallow. Yeah, no, that's okay. You can stick your tongue out if you want. You just kind of use the back of your tongue there. And so you see how it's a little bit of drainage, not too bad. <clears throat> you okay? Mm. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm just gonna look here. 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 A little bit of irritation. It's not too bad. Yeah. Definitely feel it though. I mean, it's just tickly. Yeah. Oh wow. So. Oh, so I'll just do a quick left and right so you can kind yeah. of see. It's pretty even on both sides. Wow. So you're pretty tight on both sides. It's shocking. So, so yeah, so that filter, that's on the right side. Your septum's on the left, very tight, as you can see. Very, very tight. So your septum is like very S-shaped, kind of closing off. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's on both sides that you're very tight. Jeez, so. okay. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. You want me to look on that um, left, sorry, right side? <laughs> so. Did we, I thought we did the Yeah, right I was right. just kind of showing you a quick kind of. Jeez. Yeah, very tight. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah. So, definitely not imagining that. No, we are very, very close off on both sides. On both sides. On both okay. sides. So, CT scan didn't say that. Right. It was just yeah. like. And you know what? They kept using the word mild. Mm -hmm. And so I, I thought. I wouldn't call it a mild. Yeah. I would say for sure moderate. Okay. So. Because um, to me, when I kept seeing mild, I was thinking, well, maybe I'm just, you know, maybe I can just live with this. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's super, super closed off. Okay. So I'm glad you were able to see that. Yeah. Because. Um, when I, you know, when we I just look, saw my vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> Did it hurt? No, it didn't hurt. Okay. Um, it was a little trippy. Yeah. And um, it just tickled, and it was almost it, like there was one moment where I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. It was just tickly. Yeah. And I was like, I was trying to be still. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. I'm glad it didn't hurt you. No, so. no. But yeah, but I'm glad that you were able to see that on both sides. I would say you're pretty even in terms of the blockage. So really? I would say you're almost a three on both sides. On okay. both sides. So very close to to 75%. I would say at least 70. Jeez. Well, at least so. it's not all in my head. Well, it literally is, but. Well, it literally is in your head. It's not, it, I'm not imagining it. No, so for sure. You're, you're very, very close off. And like I said, that's all genetically the way that you were born. So you've been breathing this way very tight since you were a baby. And so I probably so, have just never noticed. Yeah, and our bodies, different. our bodies are amazing in the way that they adapt to these things. But over time, when you're in a constant state of inflammation and just not resting, your body just gets tired. It gets tired over time, and, and you know that's what's happening. Okay. But with you, you know, your symptoms, you know, aren't necessarily not feeling it here because you're not, you know, you feel like you can breathe well, but certainly yeah. I can tell you can't. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I have drainage, like a lot of mm -hmm. I, mucus. I'm, I'm not a mucusy person. So it, to me, I'm just like, this is just normal. Yeah. And that middle filter, that's kind of like the gateway of all our upper sinuses. So whenever it's being smushed and very, very tight that way, creates more pressure. So it's, you know, the number one cause for headaches and, you know, different symptoms like that. So, I don't even get headaches. Yeah. 
which is weird. Like I, I used to get headaches all the time before I changed my diet, mm -hmm. and as, and after I changed my diet, I like I haven't had a headache, like not a not a, like a legit headache. But I mean, I used to be popping pain medicine for it for headaches. So you, you think that this was really caused by genetics? You know, some people can have injury to their nose and cause that, but it's so evenly on both sides that I would say it's something that you're born with. Wow. So, so yeah, most of the time if it's injury or fracture, it's usually unilateral. Yeah. You know, that patients have that, but, but you're pretty tight on both sides. So, so it's probably a genetic thing. That's, yeah, usually most of the time that's what we see. Wow. And yeah, and so I would say um, on both sides, you're pretty moderately deviated. So I wouldn't say mild. And that's what I was saying about the CAT scan. Sometimes they don't pick up, yeah. you know, the way that, that we're able to see it. Because as you can see, as soon as I go in, it's this S-shaped, very S-shaped, very narrow. And so when your septum is straight and your nasal passages are open, as soon as we go in, it's like a very open tunnel, kind of dark passage. So and that's the air. So that space that you have, that's the amount of space you have for air that goes in through your nose. Wow. So what do you think causes the inflammation or contributes to the inflammation? Yeah. So there's so many things that contribute, but diet, for sure. One diet can cause a lot of inflammation. Okay. You know, you have allergens outside, environmental allergens that can trigger inflammation. If you're not sleeping well, that triggers inflammation. If you're not breathing well, that triggers more inflammation. So do you think this is like, you know, the, the narrow passageways because of the genetic factors and then not sleeping well and then chronically inflaming right. the cortisol and that just yep. inflamed? It's in like a cycle. It's like it just builds upon each other. Yeah, and then so inflammation, treating inflammation, that's one component. And then you have your anatomy that even if you were to treat the inflammation, doesn't necessarily help it. Right. It can help it in the sense that it can help in terms of the space, but doesn't change the anatomy of it. Okay. So, so inflammation can be created just because of the irritation and the not having that airway open. For sure, okay. yeah. And so whenever... So um, even when you're perfect, otherwise, yeah, <laughs> there's, there's not, not things in your control. Right, and there's people that have straight septum and then still will have you know, mild to moderate inflammation in your sinuses. And then especially if you have polyps or other things in your sinuses that can produce more yeah. you know, obstruction and things like that. Yeah, good thing I didn't see any polyps in your passage either. Yeah, they didn't, so. they didn't say I had polyps in the nose. At least there's that. Um, I think it was just in the sinus cavities, which I'm assuming that can help your... Yeah, but both of those middle turbinates are being like compressed, compressed to both sides. No wonder I can't breathe. No wonder I'm not sleeping well. Could it be that this is the cause of the sleep apnea? Well, sleep apnea is, you know, it's separate. So we can help you in terms of breathing well through your nose, but you know, that doesn't necessarily, for, for example, if people who snore, if we help them through their nose, it doesn't necessarily cure the snoring. Right. Because it's all back here. At least I don't snore. Yeah. And I don't even have a confirmed diagnosis of apnea or yeah. narcolepsy or any of it yet. Yeah. And it's good that you got that test because that way we can, you know, either rule that out or confirm that. Sweet. So, yeah. So you were in there with me. I was. So what were you just saying before? I was like, stop, don't oh. say anything else until I put the record on. I was saying you were very adaptive. I'm adaptive? You're very adaptive because due to what we saw while we were in there, you shouldn't be able to breathe through your nose right now. <laughs> Nor should I have ever been able Nor to breathe through my nose. Nor should you have been nose. able to breathe through your nose. So, but you've adapted to be able to at least allow enough air through so that you don't even feel like you're stuffed up. You're like, I don't feel stuffed up at all. But you really should have felt stuffed up. But so the, the summary, the, the overall summary is that I have genetics that have dictated facial mm -hmm. or in, internal structures 
that are not conducive for breathing. Yep, your craniofacial structures. That that's that's the real underlying issue right now is is the cranial structure. It probably was like this since I was born, mm -hmm. and it probably exacerbated during my formative years mm -hmm. when I was eating a meat and heavy diet, oh, or yeah. meat and dairy heavy diet. Um, and and causing even more inflammation so um i'm i'm encouraged in that like it's my, my diet has only been helping yeah had i not been doing my diet all along this could have been so much worse so much faster um i'm glad i'm getting it fixed and looked at right now um i'm i'm gonna have to have surgery in order to open those passageways and those airways if anything else, um, I'm, I'm grateful that I've stumbled upon this lifestyle and this diet as, as early as I did. I'm grateful that um, that I have at least been doing that, doing everything in my power. That's the scoop. Now let's go, go to sprouts. I need some fruit and veg therapy. Uh, I, I've been really jonesing for some watermelon. Um, the the sleep study tech didn't really like my watermelon joke because I was like, I, I went in there, I went in for the sleep study and I was like, be, you know, because I, I, for you, I didn't, I restrained myself and didn't only eat watermelon today because that's the only thing I wanted to eat today was watermelon and I didn't have any watermelon because I didn't want to like, because uh, they, ha they have to take a sleeping pill to knock me out and um, I didn't want to like pee the bed. <laughs> overnight because I couldn't get up and waddle to the bathroom without unplugging all of my wires and everything and it's a big to do so he, he didn't think that was cute I, I I'm pretty sure he had to he's had to deal with all kinds of messes so it probably wasn't very funny to him but I I didn't eat watermelon because I care <laughs> but now it's watermelon time because that's what I want and that is a low inflammation food. Yes, so it is. I'm gonna go get some watermelon. Sounds good. Big deep breath. Out. Big deep breath. Out. Awesome. Let's take away that mask so she doesn't go carry that out. Alright. <laughs> and then I just need to go over meds and then we're good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, dude. Uh, can I get a I am so looking forward to your success. You're going to do great. Thank you. I really, really need this. Oh, I know you do. I, Trust you me. I can't afford anything else at this point. No, we got to get you breathing. And, you know, as far as that CPAP, you know, I, I discussed it with him. Yeah. That, yeah, it's okay to use it as long as it's not pushing on your nose, you know? What? So which mask do you have? The, the, the clown nasal. nose. The nasal. So the nasal one, I mean, it, as long as it does, it, it's okay to go here, but yeah. it can't go on the cartilage part. This is where, this is the demarcation. Mm -hmm. I don't want any pressure here. Got it. Okay? So if it's squeezing in any way that nose, distorting it, that's not a good thing. Okay? So how long should I wait? Because I think I mine does. I told him about four days. Four I would days. Prefer. Four to five okay. days. Okay. And about a week before you should uh, try getting back into exercise and lifting heavy. A week? A week. Yeah, just one can, week? Just one week. You can go, walking, week. Tomorrow, you can go walking tomorrow, but just uh, a week before you can get back in, if you want to like get back lifting? into the gym. Yeah, lifting. Heavy lifting, one week. Oh, yay. <laughs> and you don't have to take the prednisone. It's not mandatory. Really? Nope. Really. Because that one, that, I'm sorry, excuse my language, but that shit fucked me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because they had me taking prednisone to wean down from the steroid... IV infusions that they gave me for multiple sclerosis. It yeah. was a, it was a five-day IV treatment, and it was like an incredibly high amount of steroids. And so prednisone was the taper down, and I started at 50, and I was like walking sideways. No, no, it, it will mess you up. But yeah. listen, so we're not going to do any of that, okay? And I didn't give you any during the procedure. Thank you. So you have no steroids on board, okay? Now the rinse is a steroid, but it's a rinse in your nose, okay? So that's yeah. not going to go into your body. Okay? As long as you don't swallow it. Well, I was going to say, I swallow a little teeny bit of it. A little bit is okay. A little <laughs> bit is okay. But we don't want you drinking the stuff. Okay. No. Listen, I'm looking forward to your success. You're going to do awesome. Thank you. You're great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take we appreciate it. And, and of I'm course. Nettie, I'm Nettie. I'm sure to talk to you about fall precautions. And she talked to you about no narcotics today. Okay? And you're going to find out it's not a very painful procedure because I don't put packing in there. You know? Yeah. 
No packing, no splints. Like nothing. everyone online is like, D are you getting the packing? That's the worst. No worries. It is the worst. It is. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Doped up and then you read me important things. <laughs> it's alright, that's why I'm here. Yeah, that's why he's here. I'm here to remember I'm here to remember for too. you. <laughs> you said you're gonna remember everything. <laughs> I think I, I will be pretty good. I mean I remembered so far. I think the I think the primary thing is not putting pressure on any of the cartilage. That's correct. So septum is fixed. Polypers removed. Yeah, open. So in theory. In theory, you should be breathing again real well now. In theory, the upper airways are now better. Yes. In theory. In theory. We'll we'll see how the rest of it goes. <laughs> Oh. Okay. So as far as our instructions, they're gonna have their med sheets in their bag, in their black bag. Um, so you'll just basically read off of them, okay? Um, so as far as what to expect and what to do after getting home from your procedure, right. no more narcotics like for the today. And I know you don't like them anyway. Yeah, that's um, not a hard sell for me. Yeah, so what we try to do is we encourage our patients to use uh, Motrin and Tylenol to manage any pain that you may have. You know what? I might even take that. We just took it earlier. I took pain meds for the first time in nearly five years today. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of proud. <laughs> the Acronasal Spray, which is the decongestant. Um, you're going to use this for the next three days only. Okay? Do I use it today? So today you'll use it two more times. Okay. Um, and that's just aim for the back of the throat and fire not for the back of the throat like, just I mean, in the nose yeah. don't put it don't put the nozzle in your nose okay like this don't put it up your nose just squirt it into it yeah right mm -hmm. and then if you want to help her you can of course please um all you do is you just kind of gently lift up okay the tip of mm -hmm. her nose and just squirt it in just there. squirt it in there mm -hmm. got it Awesome. That's going to help minimize bleeding. Wonderful. And open her up a little more. I have a headache. I have an actual headache. I never get headaches. It's been a while, hasn't it? I never get headaches. Yeah. And it's just because of all the work that we did. Yeah. My skull's like, what the is going on? <laughs> Three completely soaked gauzes today is normal. Now, when we say soaked, we're talking end-to-end -end soaked in blood like you cannot see any white. Got okay. it. Okay? I'm okay with bleeding. She doesn't seem like you're bleeding much, but we don't want you bending over a whole lot either. Um, oh, we can stay, because all that stuff. So stay at a slightly... You are going to sleep reclined. inclined for the next two days. We have an inclined pillow. We have an inclined pillow. Good, good. Awesome. Um, and then as far as if you're having any uh, weird feeling in the back of your throat, that's from the numbing medication. Yeah. You have SEPA call lozenges in here to help with that. Can I start that now? Yes, you can. <laughs> that was... The air stuff, just the air stuff was brutal on my throat. The just, oxygen? The Yeah, the thing you had me breathing, the bre air therapy or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. slip that in the side there, behind the tape. There you go. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. So tomorrow, I'm gonna mark off the prednisone since he said you don't have to take that. Yeah, I just like, I'm not good with medications. Yeah, it's fine, we'll work with you. 
And then tomorrow is when you start all the fun stuff, all the nasal sprays. So you're gonna have two Exler nasal spray bottles. You're gonna label one Budesonide, mm -hmm. and you're gonna label the other one either Mupercent or Bacter Bacterban. Okay. Bacterban is the brand name, Mupercent is the generic name. The, the one with the ointment, the one with the Mupercent ointment, you're gonna do this up to like 50 times a day. You cannot use this enough. And it is important to use this because you're keeping everything moist in there. The less you use it, the more crusty you're gonna get, and the more pressure you're gonna feel, the more headaches you're gonna get, and you're just not gonna be able to breathe well, and it's not gonna be a fun night for you, okay? Yeah. So um, using this uh, throughout the day is very important. Just how so, often would you say? So that next day after my surgery, Oops, sorry, you're fine. I was watching TV, watching movies all day, and I just had it right on the recliner, and I was using it every 15 minutes. Okay. You know? So that. Um, the budesonide. <clears throat> you have these ampules here, and... Did she go over these with you over the phone, Tabby? I don't think so. Okay. I so think she said everything was going to be explained and just bring the bag. Okay. So you have the Exir bottle, mm -hmm. and these are little ampules. And you just squeeze one of these into the bottle, and then you'll use it four sprays. I think I'm going narcoleptic right now. All right, that's fine. <laughs> I, I, I'm here. We're, rec relax. we're recording this whole thing, so. Just FYI. No problem. Four sprays in each nostril twice a day. Twice a day. Okay. It's only good for one day. Right. So the next day you'll dump it out and you'll put distilled water in there. We have some Exlear packets, salt packets in there. Salt. So, uh, you really are gonna have to help me with this part. No, not a problem. Because when I go narcoleptic, my memory goes. Uh -huh. So, um, when we walk her out, mm -hmm. before we walk her out, um, I'll have you go to the to the pharmacy next door and get the extra packets. Okay, there are no extra packets. Yeah, they okay, didn't whoops. have them in here. So I also shortchanged me on the prednisone, but I didn't really care. So, <laughs> you'll use the distilled water a fourth of the packet of the salt packet into that bottle okay. and then another ampule and then you'll do that on a daily basis okay should i be okay. gently blowing my nose if you if you want to yes to give you some relief okay okay and then as far as your sinus cleanings did she did you have your two sinus cleanings scheduled yet I think yes they are. okay good yes good. you did i have i have that record in my phone so you'll take if you want to one of the lorazepam and one of the hydrocodone one hour before. Okay. That's up to you. I didn't take any medication for my sinus cleaning. Really? It was uncomfortable though. I'll go for that. Well. So that's up to you. Even if you want to try taking just Motrin. Wait, I think I just took Motrin. It's still uncomfortable. But that's, that's you. I decided to just suck it up. Okay, so that's that. I'm definitely going narcoleptic right now. Can we put your this other leg down to check your blood pressure? Thank you. Take it on your wrist. What's your pain level now on a scale of one to ten? Three. Okay, good. Well, that's good. Excellent. Yeah, I'm not surprised you're going narcoleptic. You've, uh, in, you've endured trauma, so. I 
this. I don't have high blood pressure. No, I know, I know. You're just, you're in pain and I, you're the dizziness. It's not helping. Um, but he said you were good to go, so. Um, I, we do have to advise you not to make any business transactions today, okay? <laughs> and she That's asked. good advice. <laughs> <laughs> she's at a high fall risk, so yeah. she can't take a bath or a shower. When she goes to the restroom, we need to make sure that you're with her. That's what I'm here for. Okay, I perfect. can't even go to the bathroom by myself. No, it's all right, you can't go back to the bathroom by yourself anyway. We have a house full of animals. I know, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you need to sleep inclined for the first 24 hours. No big deal. At least. Got that. Okay. And I'm sorry, sir, what was your name? My name's Corey. Corey. C-O-R-E-Y. C-O-R-Y. And you are? Fiance. Fiance. Life partner. Life partner. Yeah. Perfect. 19 What's and a half years. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Do you know what day of the week it is? It's Monday. Okay. And who is the President of the United States? I don't want to answer that question, and I do know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeto. Cheeto. Cheeto <laughs> right. I'm well aware. Well, she's good to go. If you want Wonderful. to go ahead and head over to the pharmacy. Okay. And are you part of the very pharmacy? Yes. Okay. So if you want to do that, we'll give you a head start, and okay. then we'll start getting her wheeled out. Wonderful. All right. One second. We can even lower that. We can even lower that shade. <laughs> she says hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Pull the shade down. Yeah. There we go. There we go, not quite the right. flare now. Alright, so Mrs. Rosenberg had surgery a few days ago. And she just had her first sinus cleaning. So we're looking, and so what she's going to be able to tell out of the corner of her eye, look down for me, look down, I want you to be able to see. Alright, do you see how you can see back? The septum is on the left, there's this filter, you see how raw it is? Yeah. And then there's a suture holding onto that filter there. And here's the sinus underneath your eye to the right. And those are all your sinuses in between and above your eye. Yeah. So you see how raw everything is, yeah. okay? The eye is right there beyond oh, that wall. That's my eye. Okay, and the brain is beyond those walls. Ah. And we went to the extreme to where, you know, obviously we didn't penetrate those. And the chances of that would be extremely unlikely in our hands. So, you're looking at that, it needs to heal, and that's where it is. And so, what I did is I cleaned out all that healing tissue so that it doesn't scar. And over here, you see how you can see back, okay? Yeah. And there's a suture right there. It's holding open that door. And then now, you can see the same thing over here. And there it is. All the way back. You can't have more surgery than this. This is it. Okay? Voila. See you guys. Amazing. Awesome. So cool. it's there. It will last you a lifetime once it's completely healed. Really? Okay? Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep.